There is newly released video purporting to show the former Wagner leader, Evgeny Prigozhin, appearing unconcerned about his safety just days before his death earlier this month. CNN senior international correspondent Fred Pleitkin is covering this story for us. So, Fred, it really is quite eerie hearing this new clip from Prigozhin after his death. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Eerie and, and quite fascinating as well, because he seems to sort of pinpoint the time that he was talking about. He said that it was in mid-August and where he is. He says that he's in Africa. But as you mentioned, he also addresses the speculation that he might soon be killed. I want to listen in to what Prigozhin said in that video. For everyone discussing whether I'm alive or not and how I'm doing, it's currently a weekend in the second half of August 2023. I'm in Africa, so for those who like to speculate about my elimination, my private life, my work there, or anything else, everything's fine, as a matter of fact. Everything is fine, Yevgeny Prigozhin said uh, in that video. Obviously, a couple of days later, uh, if indeed that was recorded in mid-August, not anything was fine anymore uh, for him. And it's quite interesting because, of course, we know, uh, Alex, that just a couple of days before that plane came down, that there was a video indeed released by Wagner of Yevgeny Prigozhin allegedly in Africa. And Vladimir Putin himself also said that when the plane was brought down, that Yevgeny Prigozhin was returning from Africa as well. Kremlin coming out now and saying that they are now investigating, as they put it, the chance that the plane was brought down deliberately. Certainly that doesn't come as a surprise to many people. Uh, another thing that also happened today is one of the other senior leaders of Wagner was also laid to rest. This was Dmitry Utkin, who, of course, was instrumental in forming Wagner, allegedly also gave the organization his name, was also the military chief of that organization as well. One of the things that we picked up on, which is quite interesting, is that he was laid to rest uh, in a memorial cemetery just outside of Moscow in a suburb called Mitishi, and he did receive military honors, of course, unlike Yevgeny Prigozhin, Alex. Of course, major questions uh, about what will happen to Wagner in Africa, where uh, Prigozhin appeared to be. Fred Pleitkin, thank you very much for that report. For more on the story, I'm joined now by Georgetown University adjunct professor Jill Doherty, who is a former CNN Moscow bureau chief. Jill, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, listening to that Prigozhin video, I can't help but think of that Mark Twain quote that reports of my death are greatly exaggerated, except then, just days later, he was indeed killed on that plane. What do you make of this posthumous tape? Well, you know, if you remember that time, um, there really were questions, where is he? He kind of disappeared for a while, but then he was also at the Kremlin for a meeting with Putin. So there was a lot of mystery. And, and also, let's not forget, we had the president of the United States and other you know, senior officials all over the world saying, I'd watch what I'm eating if I were he. So, you know, that that's not surprising. But I think Let's preface it all by saying that the Kremlin continues to say they had nothing to do with his death. But I think, you know, look at it this way. What Prigozhin did was unforgivable, according to Putin. And I think Putin, the indications are, let him think that, that actually things were forgiven. Come to the Kremlin, have other meetings. But in the end, after they began to dismantle and certainly made a lot of progress in dismantling his empire, then they didn't need him anymore. That's a theory. But of course, if they didn't need him anymore, he was gone. And Jill, we have now just seen one of the biggest drone assaults in Russia, uh, presumably by Ukraine, since this war started. And it really is signifying how much this conflict is moving deeper into Russia. Do you think that this will wake Russians up to the realities of what Putin's doing in Ukraine, or, or perhaps cause Russians to rally around Putin? You know, I think it's almost a little more complicated. I mean, the whole thing that the Kremlin has been doing is saying since the beginning of this, the invasion, don't worry, everything's under control, go back to everyday life, nothing's happening, everything's okay. And the, so now look what Russians are faced with. Right in the city of Moscow, they have drone attacks constantly and this big wave that we just saw. Uh, Prigozhin is assassinated. Uh, there's a secret burial of Prigozhin. We, you have casualties in the war. Um, inflation is skyrocketing in Russia and other economic problems. So I really think at this point, it's really hard to avoid 
but what they will end up thinking is another question. And they're also being a, a very steady diet, fed a very steady diet of disinformation. Jill Doherty, thank you very much.